New tonight, we are continuing coverage on the assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump. KSLA's Miracle Garrett met with a former Secret Service agent to gain insight on the incident in Pennsylvania. Quite frankly, it was the best of the Secret Service and probably parts of the worst of the Secret Service. Gunfire and screams could be heard all around the Trump rally held on July 13th. Someone attempted to take the life of former President Trump. But nearly 48 hours after, we're asking, how could something like this happen today? There's a real uh, issue, obviously, with the advance work and the site survey that was conducted. I, I, I cannot fathom any reason why a structure would have not, that structure that the assassin crawled on top of would not have been a part of the site survey to where it would have been uh, uh, barricaded off no access allowed inside or climbing on or, the, or a, a counter sniper should have been on that roof. How does a site surveyor ensure the environment is safe? When we do the advance work on a campaign rally, you're there three, maybe four days ahead of time. And you have the initial meeting uh, as many days out as possible. And then you have what's called countdown meetings leading up to the event. Sometimes you can have a countdown meeting multiple times a day. Local law enforcement, state police, IMSA, fire department. You even meet with the local railroad operator to make sure a train is not going over the railroad tracks if the motorcade is going to cross any railroad tracks. That's how detailed, that's how specific. Training at the Secret Service Academy can take just under half a year, and there are many different scenarios presented to prepare them to be agents. When you're at the Secret Service Academy, you're trained to grab uh, a, a weapon. I, I was taught to grab a gun and pull it into my stomach. Uh, so it would go off there and not on the protectee uh, through the practical exercise. Uh, you're taught to go through a, a parade type atmosphere and look up at windows and look up at buildings and see who's on the building, who's on the, who's on the roof, who's lurking out of a window. Uh, so you go through many, many different scenarios uh, at, through the Secret Service Academy to prepare yourself to be an agent. Are there different scenarios presented when a credible threat is identified? So we go through exercises called assaults on the principle uh, and is ingrained in you through muscle memory. Is there anything the Secret Service can learn from this incident? I think the Secret Service will learn to expand that perimeter and um, make sure that you just don't go through the motion. I'm not trying to criticize any of my former brothers and sisters that are working the Secret Service. Uh, they're heroes. Uh, but, but something happened in the site survey uh, where this structure was not uh, was not addressed. Reporting in Shreveport, Miracle Garrett, KSLA News 12. And while investigating the shooting, our crews also spoke with another former Secret Service agent after the assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump. Joe Mann is retired from the Secret Service and as an ATF agent. In this exclusive interview with KSLA, he discussed how the first thing for top Secret Service agents in these situations to take care of is the protectee. He says it is their role to get on the protectee and shield them from harm or threat. He said it is the counter assault team's job to respond when there's immediate harm like they had. The building and the parking lot uh, you know, there should have been more security there, but that perimeter should have been extended a little bit further out. Um, I saw the footage of the number of people that were there. Um, some reports were 20 to 30,000. That's a lot of people, okay? Um, I can't explain why there wasn't a drone. Well, the former Secret Service agent said this won't change a lot with the Republican National Convention security, but everyone is likely to be on high alert.